Hey folks, step right up, because today I'm gonna show you a different kind of paper computer game. This one's been sitting on my uh, in my uh, drawer for quite a while, but I'm finally gonna get to show it to you guys. And this game is called Paper Computer Game Mercado. Let's play a paper computer game. So this game's full title is called Paper Computer Game Mercado. There's, you know, like you're on a system of catwalks over this endless white void, that's the cover. Now, this game is different than every other paper computer game because unlike other games, this game cannot be played alone. You have to play this with another paper computer game, but not any specific paper computer game. You can play it with any other game. It can be one of your games. It can be one of my games. Any game you find on the PCG shop, you can play that with paper computer game Mercado. It, 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 this joins together with any other game. And here's how you do that, all right? So before you actually play this game, you have to hide uh, coins throughout your game. Like this right here, this is my first PCG, uh, the Evil League of Evilness, and as you can see on these screens, I've hidden coins in places like, there's a coin right over there, there's a coin over here, bet you didn't notice those before, and there's coins all over the place that you probably didn't notice before. Uh, oh, what's that? That's a coin. There's coins everywhere. So in addition to hiding those coins, you have to hide a little device. When you find one of the coins and you find the device, you put the coin in the device and the whole world goes blank and you find yourself in Mercado. So then that's when the PCG Mercado itself starts. So here is the story. You're a successful adventurer. You have unearthed countless secrets, saved countless lives. In your most recent adventure, you found a strange and mysterious device. In light of your success, you decided to test it out to see if it works. When you activated it, you saw a blinding flash. Your world turned upside down. You felt yourself floating in a sea of blue and white energy. Just when you're about to pass out, you now find yourself deposited rudely on the ground. Getting up, you inspect the new world around you, and you're here. So whatever character you were from the PCG you were just playing, that's who you are now. This is you. Uh, so uh, just imagine that looks like whatever your character was like. Up ahead of you, there's a sign. It just says, Welcome to Mercado. And this guy is going to explain, like, you know, he's the, he's just the welcoming guy, you know. Kind of like when you walk into Walmart, there's a guy to say, Hello, can I help you? Anything I can help you with? And he'll answer any questions. This guy is, uh, uh, his purpose, I mean, he's just going to explain what mer Mercado is. So what is Mercado? Well, it turns out that Mercado is a, play, a realm that was created many eons ago. It's sort of a place in between universes. It's not part of the regular PCG universe. It's not part of any other universe. It's sort of its own space in between the universes, a realm called Mercado. And Mercado, for those who do not know, Mercado actually means uh, market in Spanish. And... Uh, what it is, is it's just this sort of universe that was founded by, like, adventurers like yourself. People who are, you know, they're playing through their own PCGs, they're going through their own adventures, and they wanted a place where they could come, no matter where you're from in space and time, no matter what universe you come, no matter what time period, you can all come to this space, Mercado, and trade with each other, and, like, you know, buy and sell items that are useful in your PCG adventures. So, adventurers from many eons ago created Mercado. It's sort of like, you know, right now you're on a platform and this is just kind of floating in an endless white void. So there's just like blank whiteness out there. And yeah, so uh, you, you, if you go down here and explore, that's gonna take you so this is, this whole area, this is sector one of Mercado. This is the promenade, and here's where I'm gonna come clean with you guys, because this is not all complete yet. In fact, most of it is not complete. The only part you can actually explore right now is this part right over here. This is called the promenade. Now this is an upraised platform. Well, well 
I say rays, but it, right, I mean, it's just floating in this blank whiteness. So if you step off the, the, the road, you're just going to fall like, ah, into an endless, you know, void. So that's no good. The other thing about Mercado is that save game is disabled throughout the realm. So that means while you're playing this game, paper computer game Mercado, you cannot say save game because if you say it, What's going to happen is instead of, you know, going back in time like normal, it just takes you out of Mercado and you go back to whatever PCG you were playing before. So if you want to stay in Mercado, no save game, right? And if you die, same thing. You go back to the PCG you were in before. The only way to say to you ha you just have to stay alive in Mercado. That that's just that's just the deal. So as you explore the promenade, there's like various places you can go. I mean, this is the platform that you came from and you kind of step down this little staircase over here um, onto the promenade. Here's another platform. This is going to be the weapons shop. Um, and if you see uh, this screen over here has uh, the shops uh, inside of it, like, like this over here, this is our close-up of the weapons shop this guy over here he's got kind of like a cybernetic arm he's the shopkeep and yeah i mean nothing much to say about him you can uh you can buy weapons from him and we're going to show some of the items that you can actually buy so stick around for that but uh for but um that's the weapons shop then if you keep exploring the promenade uh over here this is um that's inside here this is the body shop now the body shop is interesting. That's a place where you can actually buy new parts for your body and they, the shop will attach them to your body free of charge. I mean, you have to buy the body part, but then, so, so yeah, like for example, you know, if you're a robot or whatever and you want to buy an extra arm or leg for yourself, but you know, there's no limitations to it. Like if you're a human, you can still buy an extra human leg or an extra human arm. So, I mean, that's kind of weird, but you, you know you can do it if you want so uh yeah that's uh that's that's what that is uh, then we go back to the uh promenade over here uh we've got another shop which is the tools shop and you know like that's just a shop on one of these little floating platforms you know nothing i mean like this screen you're just gonna reuse it anytime you go into a shop that's on a platform you can just reuse this screen for that shop uh so but this is just the place where you buy all sorts of tools, you know, just useful, handy items. And then we're, you know, back here on the promenade. There's just a, there's a, like a magic shop where you can buy magic stuff. And finally, there's just, you know, one more shop over there. So um, the only other thing to point out over here is over here, this staircase goes up and over here, there's a guy. This guy's not going to let you pass. There is no way to get past him. And the thing about that is like the other thing about mercado is that violence is prohibited throughout the realm so if you attack him if you like shoot a gun at him you will be ejected from um from mercado you'll be sent back to the pcg you came from so it's just like if you die if you commit violence you, you're just automatically ejected you can, it is possible to like get past people using other ways like you can be tricky you can trick him you can like can get him to turn his back somehow like if you can trick him it might be possible to get past him but it's going to be very hard because you're not supposed to get past this guy yet the reason for that is that um basically all this stuff is not done so like yeah and the only way to get up here is to go up this staircase and then you're on this platform and then there's all these other platforms these are all shops on these different platforms some are buildings some are more like little platforms and then here's this like sort of hub area that leads to all these different platforms each one has multiple shops on top of it now here's the kicker right um like i don't have anything for these shops so even if the player could somehow get past this guy it's just going to be like oh these shops are all closed right now but these shops are all potential places and you can help me fill these up you can create your own shops to go on one of these shops and you can create your own items to go with them like anyone like uh, i think it would be really cool if multiple people like created their own you know like 
you know, like, let's say, for example, if Sketchy Penguin claims this shop right over here and says, all right, that's going to be the, uh, I don't know, talismans shop, and he's going to sell a ton of talismans there, or, you know, and the, like, he could release those items in that shop on the PCG shop, and then that would go together with this game. Um, so all these all, all these uh, shops are available. They're all for rent. The only ones that are claimed right now are the ones that are along the promenade, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, but yeah, and then beyond that, like this road leads over to here. There's a gate over here. There's another gate, and these gates lead over to a out to a larger ring, which connects. You know, and that is once again area that's not done yet. I haven't created what's over there. So once again, this is just going to be area that's unexplored. Like so like future people maybe it's going to be me but maybe it's going to be somebody else could create an add-on to mercado uh that will explore what's over here because mercado is a whole realm you know there could be any number of pcgs exploring more and more of mercado and finding more and more weird and zany shops and who knows what else you might find at the heart of mercado mercado is sort of like an endlessly explorable realm it doesn't have to be just a shop it probably contains lots and lots of mysteries that we don't even know about but you know for right now it's a shop you, you, i mean you basically you can use mercado as basically a shop you know for your paper computer games you know i, I know a lot of people put like a shop button on their pcgs mercado like could like can like connect to anyone's pcg and it could be like the shop of that game um, if you want to use it, of course, you have, once again, you have to hide coins throughout your PCG in order to use it with Mercado. But like, you know, you can download any PCG from the PCG shop, just draw in a couple of coins throughout it. And voila, you can play that with Mercado. So, all right, let's get to the things. Let's show you some secret and long forgotten things, aka PCG items. They're not really secret and long forgotten. I was just being dramatic when I wrote this. But these but these are just all the items you can get at the shop. Okay. So let's start. Let's start off small, all right? We're going to start with our with the Infotech literalizer. This is like a gun. It has 5 ammo and it literalizes its targets. So you buy this, right? Um like e like I have a table by the way. Each thing costs a certain amount of coins. Um, in fact, I will, I will, you know what? Why don't I just show you that, uh, that table right this very second. So this table is in the script of Mercado. It, like when you download Mercado from the PCG shop, you get this table, but this is a table of how much, um, everything costs. So the, so the literalizer is going to cost five coins, whereas the future labs laser pistol is going to cost three. So basically what the literalizer does is it just like, Anything that's like figurative, uh, like, you know, for example, like a water bear, you know, it's not really a bear, right? We call it a water bear, but it's not actually that, right? It'll turn that into a real bear, you know? Um, and if, uh, or like a kimono dragon, it'll turn that into an actual dragon as well. So that's our literalizer. We've got the Future Labs laser pistol. This is just a regular laser pistol, except it has the special characteristic that it never kills on the first shot, ever. Like, you will never shoot somebody and it kills. You have to shoot them twice and then it's possible for it to kill. Um, and once again, this has five ammo. Then we've got, um, and like, by the way, you'll notice that some of these weapons have like the company that made them on it. Like this was the Infotech literalizer. This is the Future Labs laser pistol. Of course, Future Labs, we've seen that in Bal that company in Balzac Lobotron before. But we're, you're going to see more about that. Like, it, like sometimes companies will make things that benefit items they make. So you'll, you'll see about that as well. Over here, we've got the Infotech Guy Smasher 6000 XP. This is specifically designed to detect and destroy guys. Always successful. And it has three ammo. So that means, like, this is sort of like a bazooka thing, right? But if you aim it at a guy, and guy here is sort of loosely defined. A guy can be anything that's, like, basically a foot soldier. And, like, anything that's a, a common grunt, kind of, you know, just a random ninja dude. You know, um... You can't use it on a big enemy. You can't use it, you know, on um, 
on you know anyone important you can't use it on a random person it has to be a guy it has to be a random foot soldier dude and it's especially effective if it's actually one of you know part of the race of guys that that exists in the pcg universe but okay um what this does is it, like it fires like a almost like a heat seeking missile that'll like fly right towards the nearest guy and poof, obliterate him it never fails like you you cannot you, you know if you if you've got a clear shot like like even if you miss it doesn't matter Poof, he's he's done all right so that's the infotech guy smasher 6000 and as you can see that does cost uh 10 coins over here so then we've got um we've got some ammo over here this is just some infotech general purpose ammo so this is one of my the examples i've said because this is like infotech general purpose ammo and it's for use with any infotech projectile weapon so it only works with other weapons made by infotech and you can see that the guy smashers infotech and the literalizers infotech so once you run out of ammo for either of these weapons you can buy the general purpose ammo and that's going to help so next up we've got you know just a random parachute i mean like so far these are all the weapons that have been sold at the weapons oh maybe i should finish out the weapons shop first all right well the last thing we've got at our weapons shop is the green lantern ring now this if you've ever seen green lantern or read the green lantern comics uh, this is a ring that well this ring just grants you the powers of a green lantern and so that is unbelievably powerful which is why as you can see that is in fact uh, 20 coins so that's pretty expensive but basically this lets you the green lantern ring lets you create anything you can imagine just like out of hard out of green light so like for example you could like if I had a green lantern ring I could create, you know, I don't know, a, a, a book. And I would be holding a book in my hands, but it's just like a green glowing book because it's made out of green energy. And it's temporary. It dissolves as, like, it only exists as long as I'm willing it to exist. But once it, once I'm done with it, it just dissolves back into my ring. So, yeah. The only, only, the only downside to the Green Lantern ring is it has a finite charge. It has, like, 24 hours worth of charge in it and then it runs out of energy and then there's just no way to recharge it i mean in the comics you can recharge it on a green lantern battery so if you can find a green lantern battery you can recharge this ring but you know um unless you happen to be in a pcg where you're lucky enough to find a green lantern battery i don't think you're going to be recharging this ring anytime soon so that's the weapons shop next up we got the potions shop uh, where we can find the red potion. This is just like a regular old uh, red potion like you can see in any video game. Um, it's like you can, this has two sips in it so you can drink, uh, you can drink it twice and it'll heal you twice. Um, and that's basically what that is. It'll heal pretty much any injury or ailment. You've got, you've got your yellow potion which is gonna this only has one sip but it gives you luck so this is kind of like that that potion from uh harry potter it's uh it does make, give you uh really good luck so you drink it and then it lasts for about two screens and during that time you know you succeed at basically everything you try if if there's like luck involved you know then you've got the purple potion, which enchants you. It either, in, like, so you drink it and it gives you a magical ability, and that ability is based on what your character's personality is. Um, or if you pour it on an item, it'll enchant that item. Next up, we got the um, Ancient Builder's Metal Slash Wood Rain Stick. So this, is just, this is just basically a stick, it's just made out of metal and wood. It's durable, it's conductive, like anything you could conceivably want a stick to do, uh, which is basically be a stick and be hard and be like usable as a weapon or as whatever you want to use a stick for, this is useful. So, I mean, it's not super useful, but it, it like, it has a wide range of uses. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an all-purpose stick. All right, next up we got a parachute. Um, I mean, you know, not much to say about this. It's a parachute. It, you know, you pull the cord, it opens, and it uh, it lets you, you know, fall at a decent speed. So yeah, that's our that's our parachute. And you know, once more, I have to specify that you can bring these items into any paper computer game. Like you can purchase these and then go into any PCG with it 
and that can help you win the game. So that that's sort of the fun of it, you know? Because whoever made the PCG you're playing, they don't they weren't making it with these items in 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 you know. So that could totally break the game. Who knows? You know, you don't know how that's gonna go. And that's kind of the fun of it, right? Next up, we got uh, we got this from the body shop. We've got a small leg. So, you know, that's just, once again, the body shop where you can have extra body parts attached to you. That's just a small leg. Um, and we've got an hourglass. The hourglass is filled with sand and it lasts 10 seconds. So you turn the hourglass upside down and the sand pours out and it lasts 10 seconds. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. But maybe if you enchant it using the purple potion, something interesting might happen. Ah, see? And plus, you know, this is a PCG, so you never know what uses these things could have. There's always lots of possibilities. Next up, we've got a... This is a really good one. I, I think this is a really, really powerful item over here. We've got the door opener. Now, this opens doors. That's, that, that is what it does. That is... Like, this is limitless. Like... So when you come up to a new door that this thing has never encountered before, like inside it kind of scans it and like adapts, like like rearranges itself like a transformer. Like it just knows exactly what to do. And it gives you ex like, kind of like a Swiss army knife. It, you know, it creates whatever you need. If it's a, like the key to that door, it'll give you the key. If it needs a key card, it provides the key card. You know, if you need a tool to like, take off the hinges whatever you need to open that door it gives you that so this door this door opener can open any door so this is pretty broken right here for a lot of pcgs i mean for some pcgs it doesn't matter at all because not every pcg is going to have a door in it you know but for some pcgs this is going to be really broken so you know yeah this might be a pretty good investment depending on the game you're in then let's see what else we got we got our good old handy mini item box so we've talked about the item boxes before in my pcgs um now the the concept of a pcg item box is basically that when you like it's a magic box and when you put something inside that box the box like you, like you can put your inventory inside of it and then it'll teleport itself to the next place you're gonna go in a paper computer or like sorry the next game you're gonna be in so like if you so if you play another PCG with that same uh, player, then this item box brings inventory to that player. Like even if they're playing as another character, even if it takes place in another universe or another time period, it doesn't matter. The item box just brings it right to them to that character. So that's how that the item box works. This is a mini item box. So this only holds up to two inventory items. And sadly, you probably can't fit Zuvac inside of it, but you know, whatever. So that, so that is our mini, uh, mini item box over there. Next up, we've got the Estes Big Boom ship. So this is a model rocket ship. This is not the actual spacecraft, but this is modeled after the Big Boom starship. You you can see that ship in Balzac Globetron. It's actually it is a like a, like an Easter egg for uh, a, a, a movie called The Big Boom that Chris and I made when we were little kids, um, like where this was our spaceship kind of made out of a paper cup and we made the, like a toothpick as the nose of it. But yeah, uh, so this is like this is a model of the of the Big Boom ship and it's a model rocket. So like you know kind of like you know the actual model rockets you it, like this requires a model rocket launcher which currently i'm not selling any rocket launchers at any of these stores so i don't know how you're going to get that i mean maybe you, you could make it with the green lantern ring but that's really the only way i can think of at the moment but of course this like it if you bring it into a pcg and you find the model rocket launcher there in that pcg of course that it would work with that but anyway um yeah so it's just a little model rocket you launch it flies up into the sky parachutes down that's all it does however this also has a remote controlled laser cannon so while this like is gliding down like i mean you can't control where it flies but you can remote control make it shoot stuff and it has a weak little laser like choo, choo, choo. It, it'll hurt people and it'll knock things off tables that's basically what it's good for so yeah i mean like i don't know i think that like 
it doesn't have too much practical use in a PCG, but I just think it's kind of cool. The SD's model big boom ship. Next up, we got the Ancient Builders Tapping Wand. Um, it says tap activates target Ancient Builders artifact. So basically, this is from the PCG Fried Calamari. Ari found this in that game. And basically what this does is like when you find like ancient abandoned technology things like ancient statues with you know circuitry in them that can like or actually turn out to be robots or whatever you like bop them on the head with this or tap them it's called and then you like you gain control over them they will obey you that's what this wand does and it says it works on any anything built by ancient builders so see like this it says it's built by ancient builders the only other thing right now that's built by ancient builders is the rain stick so that's kind of weird what, what, what does that do so that's the only thing i made so far that you know um works with this however there are pcgs that have stuff built by by the ancient builders as well like in my PCG Fried Calamari, if you bring, if you purchase this tapping wand and you play Fried Calamari with it, you there's a lot of stuff you could activate with this. So that that would be a, like a way to uh, to get ahead in that game. So like, yeah, like there's some some of these things are like made to interact with certain specific you know like uh, environments like that. Um, so the only other thing I've got, oh yeah, here's a here's a small arm from the body shop as well. And finally, last but not definitely not least, we have got our very own tutorial bot deluxe. So this is uh, made by Future Labs, um, which kind of does kind of make it a little bit sus. But yeah, it says feed him activate. So he has to be fed something before he'll turn on. So that's interesting. You have to give him some kind of food. That's different than regular tutorial bot. But yeah. Um, so this is like regular tutorial bot. He gives you bad tutorials, you know, just as you would expect. And he helps you out. So you, if you buy this guy, he does become your ally. He will follow you around and hover around. And, you know, most of the stuff regular tutorial bot can do, this guy's going to do for you. All right. But he's also built with hundreds of advanced sensors. He'll analyze your situation. So this is kind of like a deluxe version of Tutorial Bot, better than the original thing. Except, you know, let's be real, he isn't actually better than the real thing. The original Tutorial Bot is actually a very powerful being. You know, you find that out later in, in Spaceballs, Tutorial Bot has some intense abilities. He is an ancient and very powerful piece of technology. This is not that. This is like a, um, this is like Future Labs is sort of like cheap knockoff brand tutorial bot with some fancy bells and whistles. So it doesn't have that, you know, incredible power. It doesn't have that godly, you know, level of ability. This is just a regular tutorial bot, like, um, and it just has, you know, extra sensors. That's it. So, but that's what that is. I still think this is pretty, uh, pretty dope. But yeah, um, that is all I've got to show you for this game right now. So this is Paper Computer Game Merc Mercado. It's only the beginning of this. I might build on this in the future. Hopefully some of you will build on it as well and release add-ons as well. I would love to see you guys uh, play it alongside some of your PCGs, and I'd love to hear how that goes. So if you do use it, definitely let me know how it goes. I think that would be super cool. But yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. I just made this game early on, like before there was a PCG community. I was planning to make it just for myself and I don't know I was gonna I, I don't know what I was thinking I was like you know maybe I could like get Chris to use it as well in some of his games I don't know like that was never a realistic idea but like it occurred to me like hey now that there is a PCG community you know now like what like why is this not out on the shop why am, why am i sleeping on this right so this pcg is now up on the pcg shop that will be linked in the description below you can get it right now you can play it and you can do stuff with it uh yeah so this is a new kind of paper computer game you can use it as an add-on to other pcgs and yeah that's all i've got to show you for right now but i think this is super cool thanks for thanks for watching you guys and Peace, you later.